Today, I'm going to be showing you how I make my Tragos earrings. They're my most popular pair, inspired by the turquoise pot Mot Mot, a colorful bird that inhabits Central America, from Southeast Mexico to Costa Rica, being the national bird of both El Salvador and Nicaragua, or is known as Guardabarranco. And now I feel like a safari guide. <laughs> The materials I use are my design that I drew the sketch with pen and paper, then scanned it, cleaned it up and printed it, a transparent sheet of drink plastic, a black sheet of paper, Prismacolor colored pencil, cutting pliers, flat pliers and round pliers, stainless steel rings and pins turquoise and black beads, a hole puncher, resin, a UV lamp, glue, and if I missed anything, I'll say it later. I trace my design into the shrink plastic on the rough side of it with green. I use this color because it's easier to blend the lines in this particular design. And as you can see, I also made some instructions for myself so I can remember exactly what I did each time I make the design. This way, my clients will know what to expect when they buy a pair of earrings from my store. For coloring, I recommend to be very gentle with your hand. In this particular design, there are some gradients and if I go in strong from the beginning, it won't be possible to add more colors later. It's always better to build things up. I use the colors PC103, PC908, PC935, PC913, PC 118 and PC 289. I had to look up how to say those numbers. I'm not used to numbers in English. I wanted to say them in Spanish so bad. When you're coloring, leave the darker colors for the end. Especially for black. It can get muddy if you don't. You can use other types of mediums, like markers, acrylic paints, and even watercolors, but I always get the best results with colored pencils. Not only in more vibrant colors, but the pieces don't curl up as much when you're heating in, in the oven. I find that the wax will melt as it shrinks, and the risk of using something like acrylic paints is that when it gets warm and shrinks, the paint can crack, or at least that's what I've seen in my experience. It's really frustrating when you do a pretty elaborate design that ends up in the trash because it doesn't uncurl. When you think you're done, take the black piece of paper and put it under your design so you can see if you missed anything. When cutting shrink plastic, I recommend to change the side you're cutting from when you reach corners or edges. Otherwise, it may cause tension and your piece will break and you will be sad. <laughs> For example, here I will stop in this corner and then change the direction in which I'm cutting as you can see in the video.
be very gentle with the scissors when you're cutting because it's very easy to mess it up and cut more than you want to with this shrink plastic. I use the smallest setting on the hole puncher. I'm not really sure if that's the name of this machine, but I'm going to call it that. It's probably that. Make sure you're not cutting it too close to the edge because it breaks pretty easily. And I was actually too close to the edge, so don't do it like I did. I'm just making two holes at the bottom of each bird because this is where the tails are going to come from. And now it's time for baking. I put my pieces on the metal tray and I set my tiny oven to 120 celsius for about 10 minutes. But I don't really leave it 10 minutes there I take it out as soon as it uncurls, otherwise your pieces might burn. Afterwards, we're going to put a resin coat to protect it, but make sure you're using gloves, eye and mask protection you're working on a ventilated area with no pets. Type the first. With just a drop of resin on the piece, I'm going to take a silicone dropper to move around the resin across the bird. Being really careful around the whole area because we don't want to close it up with resin. If you happen to make the mistake of doing that, it's okay. You can fix it later with a Dremel, but it's more work, so I recommend to be careful. When I'm done coating the piece with resin, I put it under the light of a UV lamp for about 60 seconds, and since my lamp is old and not that good, Afterwards, I just leave them under the ray of sunshine so they finish curing. While I'm waiting for my pieces to cure, I start working on the tails. I take out four wire pins and I straighten them up with a flat plier. Flat pliers? <laughs> I put a black and a turquoise bit on each of the pins and I cut two of them about one centimeter or one finger short. I use the pliers to create a loop at the end that will work as a link later. Introduce one shirt and one full length tail into a metal hub. Use the round pliers to hold the hoop and the flat ones to open and close it.
I take a pair of earring backings and paste them with strong glue on the back of my pieces. I actually struggle a lot with the assembly of the pieces because my coordination isn't the best and my hands do whatever they want. Like throw things I'm holding or don't control my strength so I unintentionally stop adding pressure and things like that. So I keep dropping the pliers or I throw the pliers. My jewelry making class in uni was my worst subject because I couldn't be fast enough and I got frustrated and I cried and now I'm selling earrings for a living so life sure is funny. I add another resin coating to the back of my earrings on top of the earring post or earring packings. Being careful again of not filling the hole with resin. When it finished the curing process, you can open your metal hubs and introduce them into the hole of the piece and close them again with the help of your flat and round pliers. This is probably the hardest part of the process, at least for me. So these are the results. I'm not actually wearing the earrings, just putting them on top so you can get a reference of the size and the length. I think these earrings always turn out pretty elegant and interesting <laughs> and not only because I made them. Well, in general Turgoses are beautiful, so there's not much to mess up. If you want to get my Turgos earrings, you can find them on my Etsy store. That is on the description box. Thank you for watching and see you the next time with an Inktober video.